Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, where we will bring you candid conversation. In each conversation, we will talk about real life ups and downs while tackling unresolved matters. We will also unmask issues and truly speak straightforward and candid about our needs and brokenness while allowing ourselves to exhale so that we can become victorious. This is a place where you can be open to the possibilities of living life in abundance while gaining tools to become bold and complete. So let's get to it. And we are back in here. Okay, come on in. Come on. It's time for the intro. Oh, what you doing? Introduce myself. Introduce myself. Oh, golly, I'm tripping myself. <laughs> what happened? I had too much break time. Yeah, you drinking water. That do me off. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> it's water. That's all it is. It is water. Okay, so we have some great people in here. They kind of reintroduced them earlier, which is Christina and uh, Coco. I want Brother Carter to bring them on the stage. What you mean, bring them on the stage? Bring them on the stage. Bring them on the stage. So so look here, y'all. (laughs) Y'all, we have two familiar Mm -hmm. faces and names on Mm -hmm, the show today. mm -hmm. And so uh, I don't have to introduce these ladies here. Well. We have Miss Christina Price on the show today. Hey, everybody. Come on. (laughs) You do have to introduce her like that. Yeah, yeah. And we, we also, yeah. hold up, honey. Oh, Can I try my MC this? skills? <laughs> okay. What you say? Can I try my MC introduction skills? Oh, okay. She took over your job. If, if that's okay. Go, Go on, yeah. see what you got. <laughs> this right. love okay. and victory show with Bad. We just we do what do. we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to the left of Brother Card, <laughs> I'm looking at him. To the left of Brother Card, we have the lovely, the vivacious Miss Christina. Don't, don't steal Bryce. my words, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> you say I can't learn from the best. There you go. There you go. Can I not glean from the show? <laughs> yes. All right, let's try again. All right. We have the wonderful Miss Christina Price over here. She's not a stranger. All right. To All right. Yes. Welcome yes. to the show, Christina. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. She's no or she's no stranger to uh, any of us here. And uh, for everyone who's tuning in, if you haven't met her before, if you haven't seen her before, we have the lovely Coco right here as Coco. well. Coco. 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 That's a Leah. Ambrose. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> you and Aaliyah was on the show. The other Aaliyah was on the show together. Y'all haven't been on the show together? No. No. So. Yeah. She wasn't with the other Aaliyah. She, that would confuse me. I wouldn't do that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the show, Aaliyah. Thank you. And so we also want to uh, put a spotlight on on the people of, uh, I don't even know what to call y'all. But y'all are part of the show as the well. Team. As well. Yeah. They ready for we it. Have Ms. Aaron on the show. Give her a yeah. applause. Ms. Aaron on the show. <laughs> And we also have the thriving one, yeah. Miss Abby. Yes. <laughs> That's me. All right, we're going to get this show going. Now we're recentered. There All we right. Go. Yeah. Come on, we're going to get it going. Welcome, guys. Okay, let's go. In the loop. Now we're going to do our in the loop segment because you guys know L&B, Love and Victory, we have a lot going on. Oh, so wow. That's what's going on. We have a nonprofit. We have so many other radio shows. I'm going to break that down for you guys. As you guys know, we have our bowling and brunch event coming up. Um, you can purchase your tickets using this QR code. Um, you can also just search bowling and brunch on Eventbrite um, and you can find it that way. It's with l and Enterprise Resources, Inc. This is for our school supplies drive of 2024. So we are raising school supplies um, and we are having a whole bunch of prizes for this bowling and brunch event whether you're maybe you're a good bowler you can win a first place trophy we mm-hmm. actually got all of our prizes in earlier this week and i'm so super maybe excited maybe you think you can challenge me <laughs> maybe i don't know <laughs> i'd be scared <laughs> um, but of course by purchasing your bowling and brunch ticket you um are also contributing to the school supplies drive of 2024 for l and um you can drop off um if you can't come to go bowling and brunch you can drop off school supplies at 616 fm 1960 road west suite 101 or you can scan that qr code by making a generous monetary donation we would yeah. love that we would love that so much um and then also we actually have a new initiative with lnv if you want to contribute in yes. a passive way 
Um, you can use the Kroger Rewards code QH541. Just go in on your Kroger Rewards account online <laughs> and input this code, and you will um, actually be contributing to LNB as you just shop for your groceries. It doesn't cost you anything extra, oh, wow. but it does help LNB Enterprise Resources Inc. So we'll um, make sure this code is on our website so you guys can access it through there as well. Then, of course, on the radio side, we have tons of other shows, including but not limited to. <laughs> VK Career Conversation on the radio on the first Monday of every month. This is after it airs live on the VK platform. Then we have Empower Hour on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. with Coach Anna. This is a self-love coach, and she's going to give you guys all sorts of tips. And we actually just came back with Season 2 of Tasteful and Talk to yeah. Y'all. Yes, yes. <laughs> season 2 came back uh, this past Wednesday and is now coming back to you regularly Wednesdays at 8 a.m. And then I have my own radio show. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's called Journeys and Ambitions. It's me and my mom. We're chaotic. We have a great time. It is so, so, so much fun. Now, you can also advertise with LV with Val Radio or the Love and Victory Show with Val. You can do that by um, emailing me at info at lvwithval.com or calling us at 832-913-1359. If there's any sort of collaboration that you are interested in doing, maybe you want to be a guest on the show. Maybe you want your own radio show. Hit me up at this number at this email and we can figure something out. All right. All right. Yes. You know, you do that in the loop so well. I it mean, does. I feel like I'm rapping. Uh, oh, yeah. so <laughs> you, I mean, you, you bring it all together so wonderfully. It's Thank like you. it makes you want to yeah. be a part. It makes me so nervous. So I'm glad you said that. Really? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, it doesn't even not, come off that way. No. no. You're I, a pro. I feel like I'm like, we're like just. Talking no, really fast. It's no. perfect. Then you yeah. flow in with the beat and everything. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, we gotta watch it. So you, that's you thriving again, yeah. huh? She is thriving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> beat, so I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> you needed that coffee. Well, uh, we're gonna do that acronym and we're gonna get this show going. And so before we get to the acronym, we're gonna get a title to the show because the acronym yes. is has yes. something to do with the title of the show, correct? Correct. Facts. Okay, so title of the show is Stop Playing in My Face. Look, dealing with toxic people, mm. fake people, problematic people, mm. just straight, straight up difficult individuals <laughs> mm. we're dealing with today. And that's Ooh. what we're going to talk Maybe about. Maybe you today. are the difficult individual. And you could be. I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could very well be that person that we're talking about today. We'll see. Okay. So what's the acronym for it? So the acronym of the day is RESPECT. Mm -hmm. mm. R is for relentless, persistent or unyielding, often in harsh or relentless manner. Mm -hmm. that's, I don't like that they use the word relentless in the definition, but that's okay. E is for egotistical, self-centered. Mm -hmm. S is for steadfast, firm and unwavering in beliefs and principles. Mm -hmm. P is for phony, inauthentic or insincere, often mm. pretending to be something or someone they are not. Mm -hmm. Toxic. E is for entitled, having a sense of deserving special treatment or privileges without justification. Toxic. C is for critical, <laughs> inclined to find fault and express disapproval. Toxic. T is for toxic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's for tactless. I like this word. Insensitive in speech or behavior, often lacking consideration for others' feelings. Toxic. AKA toxic. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, when we decided to do this, um, we we're coming up with the titles and we and we were, came up with this name. I'm like, hmm. I was in a place where I was dealing with something or some people that, you know, that sit in your face. They just kind of act like, oh, nothing's wrong, but they're mm -hmm. kind of throwing dirt mm -hmm. around the corner at you. Mm -hmm. And so we're as we're throwing out titles, I said, you know what? Stop playing in my face and it just here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I'm using that as uh, what kind of drove me to this uh, topic, when you guys heard the topic, what did you think? I'll start with Brother Carter because I know I looked at you, but I'm going to start with Brother Carter. Okay. I was completely thrown off looking at the guests on the show. I thought today's topic was going to be about makeup and beauty or something of that nature because these two uh, uh, they work in the industry of, mm -hmm. you know, hair, nails, face. <laughs> and so when I seen fake people, I was like, okay, let me look at this a little bit. 
And I found out that these are, we're talking about, like I said in the introduction, difficult individuals to uh, be around. Sometimes you don't even want to be around these kind of toxic individuals. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good subject to talk about. So you thought that the uh, show and the title was, uh, came up in regards to the people that were going to be on the panel? I, I thought yeah, that's the way we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of times um, we try to, yeah. but we don't do it all the time. We just felt like these two young ladies would okay. be a great group of people to really get this conversation going because mm-hmm. they're so open mm-hmm. and they're good in their space with mm-hmm. talking okay. about general things. Mm-hmm. So when you heard it, Christina, what did you think? I just thought about initially like people who have taken advantage of you or people who just use your kindness for weakness Mm -hmm. uh, to manipulate, to get what they want Mm -hmm. and things like that. I didn't really think of toxicity, toxicity, Mm -hmm. but yeah, Mm -hmm. that that's pretty much it. That's Mm -hmm. it. All right. So when I first heard it, I was completely off with thinking what you guys are thinking. Stop playing in my face. When I seen the co-host like Mm -hmm. her on here, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, is that, all things face, all things <laughs> makeup, skincare. Honestly, that's where my mind went. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, so when you say stop playing in my face, something with this. But then when the more I kind of dug into it, I was like, okay, we're talking differently. So I went different. I went completely left with you, it. <laughs> so you really took it from what you guys do. Right. Okay. So I was kind of with Brother Clark because I don't think y'all really explained it that deep. She just gave me the title and I was just like, okay. And we usually don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, yep. we do. We kind of want you to come with your own first perspective mm-hmm. and let's see where it goes. Gotcha. So, all right, then. Do you think, how have you gained? So we're basically talking about people that spit, on, spit in your face and tell you it's raining. Oh, yeah, that's a good. I think that is. I think that's a perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. (laughs) And then try to cover you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Let's get Let's get it on. So how do you gain respect for people around you? Mm -hmm. You think and just think about that. So when you have people that are playing in your in your face mm-hmm. and you've allowed them to play in your face for a while and you've not said anything about it and maybe you never even recognize that that's mm-hmm. what they're doing mm-hmm. how do you gain that respect or how do you get to you set boundaries you start setting boundaries so are you afraid when you know initially that you see someone doing that and you're like how do i approach that well, well, yeah, initially, I believe, and even in my experiences, I've always, when I've noticed it or like my eyes were open to it, it was like, oh, wait a minute, they playing with me. Are they taking advantage of me? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to address this? How am I going to deal with it? Because I know it has to be dealt with now mm-hmm. that I see it. Mm-hmm. But um, in one instance, I just set boundaries. Mm-hmm. Even Either I distance myself because I'm not one to, I'm not big on talking about stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not big on having certain conversations. I'm mm-hmm. just like, okay, now I see it. Okay, I'm going to act accordingly. Because mm-hmm. some conversations for me with those type of people are just like, it, it, you get nowhere. You just give them an opportunity to lie to you, mm-hmm. I feel. Mm-hmm. So because, you know, when those people are doing that, like playing in your face, they're manipulators. This is what they do. They're mm-hmm. intentionally doing, doing it. it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm not even about to give you the satisfaction to play in my face by like, lying to me. Mm-hmm. So I'll just Cut distance myself, set boundaries, and slowly but surely, you know, move away. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's real good. What about I you? Like that. So for me, um, I'm big on communication. I have two sides of me. I can cut you clean off, but if I feel like you mean something to me, I kind of want to talk about what I feel, what I feel like. I could be completely wrong about something. So the best thing to do is to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people in relationships with family, friends, partners, without a proper conversation. Mm -hmm. And then people can just be so cold and just be like, I'm done. You know, I'm cutting them clean off. For me, I rather, if it's important to me to be around the person, clearly it meant something to me. So let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. How am I feeling? How are you feeling? And then if I still feel like we're not going anywhere with it, the conversation is just, like she said, in circles, Mm -hmm. you might have to cut ties at that point because I'm trying here. I'm going to see how you're trying. And then we just go from there. But once you realize something, I think it's so important to speak on it rather than I'm just going to be quiet and, and just let it flow. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I I like both of you guys' answers because for me, I'm the type of person I have to have a conversation. I have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When someone, when something affects me, I have to, or I'm mm-hmm. picking up, especially if I care about it. Mm-hmm. Now, once I 
have dealt with it. Once I've had a conversation and that still continues to happen, I know that I know myself well enough that I am going to separate. I'm going to mm-hmm. separate mm-hmm. because it's going to continue to be a very uncomfortable and a toxic and an unhealthy mm-hmm. place for me mm-hmm. because it's not going to get any better. What's going to end up happening. We're going to start doing this. Mm-hmm. And that's not what I want around me. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, the- what if you're not a, a come, uh, a computational individual. Right. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people that are not like that. They don't want to have a, a conversation. A, not the conversation itself, but the confrontation. They don't want to have they don't want to face it and have the the dialogue. Even mm-hmm. have the dialogue with a person that's that you don't really feel that they're gonna really receive you anyway, like you were saying. But I think it. that you you owe yourself that and I get the person not being confrontational, but sometimes mm-hmm. not being using that as a reason not to address something. It's very toxic mm-hmm. and it's, it's unhealthy. How is it toxic for, is it toxic for the person that's. It's, it's toxic for the relationship. It's toxic for the people because you need to have a, there has to be some form of communication. Mm-hmm. I believe that when there is, if there is a problem and there is no, conversation or we're mm-hmm. acting as if we don't know something's going on mm-hmm. that's not a good thing you mm-hmm. got to kind of deal with it. you want to jump on that i think that when people don't when they don't have a certain relationship and value with themselves mm-hmm. that's when they tend to not want to be confrontational but when you get to a place with yourself where you value yourself you love yourself you're mm-hmm. all about you know self-care and mm-hmm. you know the best for you you're not uncomfortable saying to the next person look i don't like how you offended me you mm-hmm. know you're going to do whatever you need to do to you know continue to love on self mm-hmm. and to have that self-care if i'm explaining but, but that most right. of the time when you're dealing with a difficult con- uh, uh, a difficult person a problematic individual mm-hmm. the f- First thing they lack is communication skills. Right. So I'm not and so, about. right. So when you try to have a conversation with a problematic individual, mm-hmm. you just want inviting more problems into your life. It, you yeah. Know. I, <laughs> One thousand <laughs> percent. Go ahead. Everyone's not a communicator. Mm-hmm. So the thing about having peace within yourself. So mm-hmm. if you feel like you're having an issue with someone and you're the person who likes to talk and then that person is just like, it's stressing you out because it's going in circles. It's going in circles. They mm-hmm. think that communication means being confrontational mm-hmm. when it's not. Some mm-hmm. people just don't know the difference. Or I can't never blame anyone for what they don't know. Right. You know, everyone yeah. isn't taught communication as adults. We have to get, you know, learn it. Mm-hmm. But it's the peace within yourself. So if you say what you need to get out mm-hmm. and you say, hey, this is what I noticed or this is what's going on. And then you put it out there clear enough for that person to understand where you're coming from, it ain't on you no more. Mm -hmm. As long as you talk how you feel Mm -hmm. and what you see, how they pick that up, we are completely two different separate human beings. So you Mm -hmm. can't take that personal by the card because it's a lot of people out here that's not communicators. Mm -hmm. You got to get your piece out and then I Mm -hmm. feel like you'll you're good. You're, You're not going to that, that, that come with it, having a conversation with a rational individual, though. But you, when, you, when you, you talking can't. about when you talk talking about an in, irrational type of individual, mm-hmm. that conversation can be totally different. Mm-hmm. But I think when you're yeah. putting the responsibility or, or you're giving the power to the person that you're considering the irrational mm-hmm. person, you're taking your power away. I think what I'm hearing them say is that you still have to get how out how mm-hmm. something is making you feel yeah. Yeah. like speak your piece yes because yeah. if by not speaking your piece it's only and you're holding that stuff in mm-hmm. and i'm not saying you i'm just saying it's still affecting you the individual mm-hmm. so yeah. you we'll have to go to that. abigail in a minute yeah. because i've been around people like that that i try to communicate with mm-hmm. but they're stuck in their own stubborn ways yeah. and you just there's nothing you can do Without somebody receiving therapy or something of that nature, Abigail, what you have? So I am a, a yapper. I like to talk. Mm-hmm. I like to I like to talk things out and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I I do struggle sometimes with confrontation in certain settings if um I don't feel like maybe I I feel super confident about it. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did have to deal with a particularly difficult individual for a period of time, and I really had to learn no matter how much I what you were saying like got out. Mm-hmm. what I needed to say, this person found a way to like make the conversation turn completely left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no conversation with this individual was ever, ever going to be productive. Mm-hmm. And so I had to then say, my point is clearly not going to become like, 
come across. Mm -hmm. So I can sit here and try and try and try and end up feeling negative after every interaction. Mm -hmm. Or I can make the decision that, you know what, this isn't worth my time or my energy. You yeah. You're clearly never going to see what I'm what right. I'm talking about. Right. right. Because you live in your own delusion. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to choose to, which can be really difficult when, you're, when you are the type of person who really yeah. wants to get out your emotions and how you feel. You right. want that person to just you want to feel understood. You want them to yeah. understand. You like this is why receptive to you. I'm <laughs> upset about X, Y, Z. And when they're just taking it a whole other way, you have yeah. to like take yourself out of the situation and recognize that you are only hurting yourself there you mm -hmm. go. by continuing it. that. Right. Yeah, too absolutely. It. Too much yeah. energy. Yeah. And, and and it's not always about just closing off. You have to make a decision that if it's that bad, I need to really get out of this because mm -hmm. it's unhealthy for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing wrong with you. If you're leaving me. like sweating and like hot because you're so angry, which like my my triggers come out through my body. Like I start to get really like sweat, sweating <laughs> and like I, and I get like I start to shake. It's crazy. So like when I'm leaving an interaction, feeling that way physically, girl, bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, let's, and let's just be frank. I mean, most of our uh, issues in life come from the closest ones to us. Mm -hmm. True. True. And so you just can't necessarily say, I'm just going to get up and leave this individual. Right. That's true. And well, so I disagree. I, and I'm going to say why I disagree. When you say get up and leave, what that mean for the moment or lead a relationship? I, I, I think that you have to separate yourself, even if it's a family member that is unhealthy mm -hmm. even for a period of time. You, it's just it doesn't matter it's because boundary. if it's un, it's a boundary thing, if it's not mm -hmm. healthy, it's not healthy. And I think what we tend to do, oh, this family. So I have mm -hmm. to overlook it. I have to. No, mm -hmm. you have to separate yourself mm -hmm. from that, because what you're doing is it's not saying that you don't love your family. Mm -hmm. It does not saying that that individual is not important, but you're choosing your yeah. health. And, yeah. your mm -hmm. that's, and that's so good. that's what I mean. And I think that's very important and that's so healthy, uh, especially with the family relationships yeah. and the whole family dynamic, because we are taught that just because you're my family, I have, have to, to be connected to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to have everyday ties with you. And that's just not the case. And so many people are drowning in those mm -hmm. relationships and mm -hmm. hurting in those relationships because they think, oh, well, because this is my cousin, this is my sister. I have to endure this mm -hmm. level of abuse. This yes. is my child. And, this yeah, is my and spouse. No, yeah. no, it's no, just no. not. Uh, and you have to. Be and it's not, again, it sounds cold, but it's actually you're choosing the relationship mm -hmm. in the long term mm -hmm. uh, better because if you stay in it like that right mm -hmm. now, you're hurting both. But people. some right. of these relationships, you're going to be in the same house or maybe in the same office mm -hmm. with the person that mm -hmm. that uh, had some words up there for respect up there. but. Uh. Oh, you mean for the acronym? The acronym. Oh, yeah. Let me pull that up for you. There was some words up there. There you go. Egotistical, you know, <laughs> uh, phony. Yeah. Critical, very critical. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, I mean, it's going to be but, difficult trying to have communication so yeah. with you, individuals with these. But then what you still have to do there, it doesn't matter that they are. And I keep going back to this because, uh, I know for my own health, mm -hmm. my own peace of mind, it doesn't matter that it's family. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. that even if it's in a relationship with a spouse or mm -hmm. someone you're dating, it's important to still be in a healthy place for the relationship right. to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So you may have to make some decisions to choose you mm -hmm. because you staying in something that is put them words back up there. <laughs> I want them to see your pretty face. Okay, no, I okay put the words back up there. there uh, relentless. You're constantly being just mm. tore down. It's everything that you do with this person. You're, you're, you're kind of uh, relentless, man. You, you, you're you relentless at, in your pursuit of what you want in life. You're very relentless well, when it comes to that. That's good. Okay. But, uh, but, okay, but if, it's, if you're talking <laughs> about me, then you need to... Okay, anyway, I'm just Egotistical, saying. Egotistical, <laughs> I, I may be pragmatically known as being <laughs> <laughs> egotistically. Well, I, I, I want to say this and, and I, not making a joke about it yeah. for anybody. I don't care whether you're what, and it's not giving up on a relationship. 
It's choosing you. Mm-hmm. Life is mm-hmm. too short. It's too much stress and pressure that you have to deal with day in and day out. Right. You don't just sit in that stuff because you're going to look up one day mm-hmm. and uh, wow, life is going to switch on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be just you're talking about being broken. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you have the opportunity to just step away from those health unhealthy relationships, yeah. I'm an advocate. Even if it's you. just for a moment. Even if it's just for okay. a moment, choose yourself. Yeah, because yeah. I heard Brother Carter say, like, what if you're in a workplace with them, or if you have to see someone. So mm-hmm. my take on it, I've been in a workplace where I've been around toxic people. Right. Mm-hmm. I have to go back to choosing your peace and choosing you yourself. Go. So you. just because somebody else is in a darkness, mm-hmm. or they fighting demons, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. they going through something on their own that ain't your fight so if you are at peace with yourself yes you can kind of it's a wall that you you mentally put up that you can be like smiling you can be happy Mm -hmm. and then the person could be in a room next to you going nuts you know what i mean so it's it's about your peace and eventually you'll be able to really figure out your a b c and d yes Mm -hmm. what do i need to do to continue to have my peace mm-hmm. so once you decide to keep your peace that's a mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then you say what do i need to do to continue to keep my peace that's b a plan in place mm-hmm. and d is act we're gonna act on it yeah yeah so you gotta keep that in mind yeah. i agree with that because mm-hmm. even when i'm in certain situations and somebody annoy me or mm-hmm. i'm so triggered by something somebody do i always look at myself yes. and i've learned to say like okay christina this is a you thing why does that affect you mm-hmm. that's what they're doing that's even though they're doing it to you they're trying to penetrate you but why mm-hmm. is it getting to you yeah so you go back and you know figure out self mm-hmm. versus focusing on, oh, they're getting on my nerves. They're yes. doing this, they're doing mm-hmm. it. That's a me thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, that's, 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 that's a you thing. You getting on my nerves. You getting on my, my nerves. Not me <laughs> getting on my nerves. You getting, you on, getting, my getting nerves. on my nerves. Why is it triggering <laughs> you? But you have to, I love that because you have to look at, you see how Brother Carter made that? He's like, he's talking. No, it's he not was, a me thing. Off that's with not him. Me. He had nothing to do with that. Go ahead, Abigail. <laughs> gonna say you know when you have to deal with somebody whether it be at work or just someone that you like there's no getting around it you have to interact with this individual mm-hmm. and they're really- every morning at seven o'clock a.m <laughs> that individual is gonna right be sitting there. right there doing the same foolishness, the same foolishness. <laughs> yeah. i think like and this is easier said than done right because i'm the type of person where i am very easily irritated and i feel mm-hmm. like i show it on my face i'm like okay whatever mm-hmm. um but like something that i really try to really lean into in those mm-hmm. moments is like i'm not gonna let you make me look bad there you mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. you can act a fool mm-hmm. you can be however you want to be mm-hmm. but one thing i'm not gonna do is fight the fire with fire because mm-hmm. then you're gonna to everybody else yeah. it's going to seem justified right. Well, right. she was doing this yes. right. this is why yeah. I treated her this way exactly. whereas if I'm always staying on my ground on who mm-hmm. I am mm-hmm. and you want to act how you want to act you look crazy there right. you go because <laughs> if you come at me on Monday morning with that foolishness <laughs> you know brother Carter ain't feeling all he ain't feeling it on Monday morning <laughs> Monday mornings is not your Monday name. mornings is not the time yeah. to come with your foolishness uh-huh. to so brother gonna, Carter what you gonna do brother Carter you gonna get it <laughs> you gonna get it so brother Carter you're you not gonna, gonna get it you have no control not Tuesday through Friday I can bounce it off the show <laughs> okay <laughs> Monday's the problem sorry the week yeah <laughs> So I, I can't start it off like that. Just everybody go to their corners. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there any help? Is there any help for him? Because you that that's still a self thing. You're still giving control to them to me. on Monday. No, you're not. No, you're, I'm giving control to me. How? You're gonna let you're gonna give it, you're gonna he ignores them. He yeah. No, he's not ignoring them. No, <laughs> he's on Monday, he is not ignoring Monday, them. Everybody know it. Don't don't don't, 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 don't even the boss know. Don't know. <laughs> they can't speak to you. Oh, not on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello and keep it moving. <laughs> you know, I had a long weekend. Okay. That's a whole lot of cognac in me okay. over the weekend. Oh my god. So Monday morning, uh, don't go talking about no meetings or none of that. <laughs> oh my god. This and show- I know y'all on the show listening. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So. <laughs> Lord, what were you getting ready to say, Aaron? Yeah, no. So it, uh, what y'all were saying remind me of a lesson I learned in college. It's uh, what you do is not who you are. What you do reflects who you are, mm. right? Mm. And when like you get that. into uh, whether it be work or family and everything, and we don't typically like consciously think about like who we are because like we are who we are, right? Mm-hmm. But like 
we have to all do the individual work on ourselves to determine who we are choosing to be and who we are choosing to become. Mm -hmm. Because when we interact with those toxic people in our lives, they are challenging who we are trying to become. Mm -hmm. And uh, how your response to that and how, what comes out is who you are. Like what you do isn't. It's right. like, oh, you can deal with it and you can push it to the side or, yeah. you know, what you do. But it's what you do is a reflection. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not the core. So, yeah. You yeah. So you t you, you're telling the people it's time to grow up. I, I hear what you're saying. It's time. <laughs> I think we yes. are all very tempted to be very lazy. Mm -hmm. I know I am. At least. Mm -hmm. I'll speak from my experience. I know I have so many temptations. I just... I, I get home. I don't want to do nothing. Yeah. Right. But I also and I go back and forth because your environment can be very mm -hmm. good or very bad. But you also it's the balance of the environment and the choice. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, you only come out when you're under trial and when you push it to the side, when you are unwilling to have conflict. Like I, I'm not great at conflict. I've, I'm learning to go through that. And mm -hmm. uh, I've learned so much since, you know, just listening and working for Mrs. Carter um, and I'm still not great, but I'm better and, than. And I it's was. not necessarily having conflict; it's how you. It, it's how yeah, you engage with. Right. It. It's how you go through those things that you right. struggle with. Because my <clears throat> conflicts, the things I mm -hmm. deal with, are very different from what you do, right. from what Miss Carter and mm -hmm. Abby and right. Coco and. Because uh, my conflict, you may not even think is a conflict. We just having a conversation. Yeah, and like you might look yeah. and be like, Aaron, like suck it up, like breathe, yeah. but like it's very real yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the idea is, whatever challenge you have. Mm -hmm learning to work through that and choosing to be who you want to be versus yeah. letting them I put that on you. absolutely love that yeah. because your reaction, that, that I just love that. And that's something that we all really need to take home, take home and hold on to mm -hmm. and think about when we're trying to avoid a situation mm -hmm. or deal with the situation because everything that we do is about what react, what, what am I leaving other people with their opinion of me mm -hmm. when I write something. And right. I think it's like a double-edged sword, right? Because if you're the type of person that's super confrontational and stuff like that, you're seen as like combative. Like people like walk on eggshells around you. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't stand up for yourself, people walk all over you and take advantage of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it really is such a double-edged sword where you have to kind of figure out, find that like fine yeah. line in the middle mm -hmm. yeah. of like standing up for yourself and advocating for yourself mm -hmm. and others, but not being like a pushover and mm -hmm. yeah right well, and where you and where you anchor yourself too is so important like i know like in, in the bible it talks about how um like when you become a christian like you're not just walking in like your own power like you're given new life and it's not just that you're living your life and trying to follow these rules but you're representing who you say you serve mm -hmm. right and so like obviously we're not perfect but in the general there should sense, be some people signs. Have, people, yeah, people should be able to see there is something <laughs> yeah. different, yeah. and that would have that conversation. One hundred percent. So let's move the conversation a little bit deeper here. Well, come on, brother. How come. do you deal? Okay, we've kind of been talking about that already, but I want to talk about uh, dealing with toxic people in your life, and I think we already engaged in that. So. You, you still want to stay on the toxic yeah. line of it? Yeah. I, and that's okay, because how do you deal with toxic people? They are they're dear to you. They may just be a co-worker. Uh, that's just who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, what tools? What, do that, that's not the question. What makes, uh, what's the, the, the clear signs of a toxic or difficult individual? Is there some kind of signs? Yeah. Especially with people that are new, dating new people or, or visiting with new people in their lives are there some signs out there that let you know this person is very difficult to deal with or something go ahead i just want to start by saying i think everyone has toxic traits yes. we all do things that okay. like it's toxic yeah. to somebody yeah. right mm -hmm. um you could come into something with you you're all you're the bad guy in someone's story right like mm -hmm. you you Think about like if you are if you do confront somebody with mm -hmm. something, they might not be in a place to receive that criticism. That so time. to them, you're the bad right, guy, right. Mm -hmm. even though you were doing what was best for you in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I do think everyone has those like traits that like, mm, I'm, you know, maybe I come across a certain way mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, something that I think a lot of people for don't like they like oversee is the love bombing mm -hmm. in relationships. Mm -hmm. Like when someone's like really into you right away. Because, like, I'm the type of person I, I like a lot of attention. <laughs> and so, 
<laughs> and so if they not, know that, they, they know will that. play so, that card on you. So they give me a lot of attention. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I love this. I love this. And then six and months down the line, the I'm like, where's my attention? Yeah. Why aren't mm-hmm. you calling me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think love bombing is a big one because um, it feeds your ego. It makes you feel good. And then they. It's that false security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Anything you like? I also feel like so. As humans, we tend to ignore when you see toxic traits. I feel mm-hmm. like you get yes. people with choice after choice, and it's just like, eh, if they probably didn't mean it, or mm-hmm. um, it didn't come off that way. Maybe I'm overthinking. So in relationships and partnerships, friendships, you tend to keep pushing it to the to the back until mm-hmm. it gets to a point where it's no more hiding it. It's no more mm-hmm. pushing it to the back. And how to answer your question on how you deal with it, you either choose to or you choose not to. Right. So... I think in life we make things so much more complicated than it is because you you have connections to people. You it's like you're connected to the point where you're just like, how do I cut that off from being toxic? But you have to once again choose yourself. So mm-hmm. the second you choose yourself, you'll kind of figure out how I want to deal with this person. You can't change people. Yes. So if right. someone is toxic, it is not your job to try to, to try to get them to one see that they're toxic mm-hmm. or try to help them work out why they're toxic. Exactly. That's their self work. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that you can do as a friend, a partner, a family member is say you can call them out. Like you're yeah. you're toxic. Mm-hmm. You got some stuff you need to work on. Yeah. But is it your choice to try to help them work through that? No. No. Sometimes no. it is. It's not. Sometimes, so. sometimes all you have to do sometimes is drop the seed sometimes. For them to notice? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just drop the seed. And then, well, let me finish. Okay. If you're not doing it to uh, hurt, them. hurt them or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. If you're doing dropping the seed of love and and, and you just want it to fertilize, God to fertilize, yeah. it, you yeah. just drop it and wow. leave it alone. No matter how toxic that individual mm-hmm. may get, yep. that individual, I believe, will come to see this toxicity yeah, you within pray themselves. For it. Yeah. You pray for it for mm-hmm. them to realize it and you you really have to make the decision. Is this person worth being in my life dealing with this or is mm-hmm. it not? Like, and if it's not, cut the person off because if you see it from day one, it's only going to get worse. Right. So all I need to do is separate myself from mm-hmm. you and pray for you on the back end. Mm-hmm. But if it's one of those relationships that I have to stay close with, mm-hmm. you know, I'll just, I'll let you know and I'll try to help a little bit if mm-hmm. you want help. But if you don't, that's an indication that I don't need to be in this relationship. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we're so tied to people. Like, yes. we're so, so overly tied to people as mm-hmm. if we're not living this life like it's it's about self first you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying because i think when we answer when we answer to god we're going to answer about self and yes. why we did what we did it's not going to be like well you did this you know yeah, uh, you ain't gonna be the point fingers, huh? no because god's gonna say i'm talking mm-hmm. about you yeah right and that's exactly what i where i was getting ready to go because we want to because we want to look like we're doing this thing, especially us mm-hmm. as Christians. Mm-hmm. We want to look like I'm never going to give up on you. I'm never no. going to give up on you. I'm going to be here. I'm here. I'm here to help you. Well, I'm not God. Mm-hmm. Again, just like the plane, when you're on a plane, what do they say? You got to protect, put your mm-hmm. protective gear on first mm-hmm. and then protect the person next to you. Mm-hmm. So you got to take care of yourself. It's not selfish. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's self- intentional. You have to take care of yourself. And if there is a someone showing you signs that they're toxic, that they're unhealthy to be in this relationship, don't ignore it. We as women tend to stay in those situations mm-hmm. because we want to have someone and we want to look like six superheroes. Mm-hmm. Superheroes mm-hmm. and we want to save we and everything save like that. We want to save it to the point that we become that very thing yeah. that we know is not good. We mm-hmm. become toxic. Yeah. Yes. And depleted and everything like it that. It can off on you. It really will. Yeah, it yeah. does. Mm-hmm. And we don't understand it. And we miss purpose so many times. And we miss what we really supposed to be doing, our assignments, because we're so busy trying to work on this project yes. here when that's not my battle. That's not mm-hmm. my assignment. So I'm busy trying to fix Planning and up. fix over mm-hmm. here, and the whole time I'm needed over, over there, here. So I'm out of place, yes, because of what I want to have control and I want to be the superhero to fix this person. I want to, it's really a thing that I'm fighting in myself. <laughs> Come on mm-hmm. now, like I'm trying to show that oh, I can do I that, can. I can change that no. person. Mm-hmm. That's a self thing, and that's a selfish thing. And right now, I want to take control right now because I need to take a pause for the calls, right quick. <laughs> and we need to come, when we come back, <laughs> I, I, want, I want us to talk about. Uh, people that lack empathy. Oh. Mm-hmm. 
That's so we good. come back. Uh, we had to take a pause for the cause. <laughs> Look at Brother <laughs> Carter over here. All brand new. <laughs> all brand new. All brand new. Oh, baby, we, that was a good song okay. we got to play for that break that you needed. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get back in here. You, we got to get to some Q&A. But before we get to Q&A, okay. he let's, did have yeah. a question let's, let's that he posed the to us. the lack of empathy. The, what is empathy, I first and foremost? Mm-hmm. Anybody want to take a shot at What is empathy? Yeah, because I, I no, get no, confused. I don't want the actual definition. I want what we think empathy empathy is. is. Well, I think I think empathy is caring. They're caring for something or someone outside of yourself, showing compassion to someone feeling. Very good, Valerie. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Coco, you have a um, maybe you're trying to step outside of your own shoes and put yourself in someone else's situation to see how you can care for them with it not affecting you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like mm-hmm. really, I guess like, yeah, putting yourself mm-hmm. in someone else's shoes. I feel for you mm-hmm. and understanding. Mm-hmm. 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 Price, just, you got anything? Yeah, just sharing those emotions with them or those, you know, feelings. Just having a level of understanding. Mm-hmm. I looked it up. Um, you looked it up? Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, I did. laughs> I get confused a- with sympathy. Sympathy and empathy. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Because uh, empathy is, I, I agree with all uh, what you said. Is the ability to absorb and feel someone else's uh, outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> on this show today, we've been dealing talking about toxic and uh, problematic, difficult individuals, and I think they lack empathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there shouldn't yeah. there shouldn't that be a sign that this person is difficult or no. problematic if they lack empathy? I don't know if they necessarily lack empathy because they're toxic. No, I'm saying if they lack empathy, not. Oh, are you talking about the toxic person? Yeah. Lacking the empathy? Individual that, yes. Mm-hmm. Does that make them toxic? Does it make, is that what you're asking? Does it make, like you said? Like um, well, first I want to know is, could that be a sign of someone that's, that's uh, problematic or toxic? I'm going to say no. Yeah. Some yeah. people are just, some, I'll say some people just mind their business to the point where it's just like, what you got going on just doesn't affect me. Mm-hmm. So they don't even have it in them. It also, some people are, are cold, but that doesn't mean that they're toxic. I don't believe this. I, just, uh, I disagree with toxic. that whole, wholeheartedly. <laughs> well, when, that, when she's... Wholeheartedly, I disagree. In relationships, it can be toxic. Now, if that's just naturally who they are, that's just who they are, you know, and they so will have... a person that's has no uh if i'm in a relationship with that person on some level whatever mm-hmm. type of relationship it is it will become it would become toxic mm-hmm. because it's like i'm he has no friends empathy with a person for nothing who has that's empathy. going on in your life yeah he's not even trying to step outside of himself for right. me or she is not trying to understand me like she's not even trying to yeah. because she lacks empathy can mm-hmm. that be toxic in a relationship absolutely yeah. i think, so. I think it's, it's a clear sign for uh, me personally it in someone knowing you yeah. so like mm-hmm. let's say you're out and it's a lot of people that see homeless people that see mm-hmm. people on the street and be like oh that person might just you know he might just be getting high or she might be getting high mm-hmm. they might not even relate to it to feel it depends on your relationship with the person mm-hmm. i think yeah. because yeah. i don't think it means they're toxic because they can't Relate to what? Yeah, but if you're in a relationship, they're wrong. No, no, that's right. I see what you're saying, saying. but it's like when you're in a relationship with that type of person, that's that's when it becomes toxic eventually. Yeah. Hey guys, we got 15 minutes before the show, and I got to bring the crew in. Yes, come on, come on, give us some. This is a good with conversation. The questions? Yes, okay. I want to hear their questions and I kind of want to respond to them. Mm-hmm. Yes, so there's a lot of questions on mm-hmm. here. So I'm going to try to, we're going to try to break it down a little bit. I'm going to try to pick up. Not that we can answer them all, but we're going we're we're to gonna acknowledge gonna some of them. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, let's do, ooh, I like this one. This is from Kevin McLaughlin on Facebook says, Have you ever been betrayed by your close people? The closest, yeah. Oh mm-hmm. my God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. very painful. Uh, and it, it you have to be very careful with that because that pain can turn into anger. That mm-hmm. anger can turn into rage. Mm-hmm. That rage can turn into resentment. Mm-hmm. So very much so. And that's when you start acting out of your own character. And you become mm-hmm. very, You're not you got, who you are anymore. Exactly. Now, could yeah. you be betrayed by someone that you don't care about? Uh, no, I think you can be. Well, yeah, you I can think be. on the context. You can. No, be. I think betrayal comes from a place of like closeness. Like, right. think about it. Like, if someone we walk and you pass the street says you're, you're ugly, 
You're not going to think twice about yeah, it. You're not the person on the street. Right. But if yeah. your closest person says, you look a little messed up today, like that's mm-hmm. going to hurt, hurt more. So yeah. I think betrayal does come from a it's place helpful. of care and love. Yeah. In the same way, you can't hate somebody that, that you, you didn't know. love at one point. That you don't right. mm-hmm. think about. So yeah. is betrayal yeah. and stabbing in the back two different things? Because I'm sitting here thinking in like a work context, like you have a team member, you might not necessarily like them, but like y'all are able to work together. Y'all have a project or something. Mm-hmm. And then they just do something completely off the chart or like didn't tell you to do a thing. And then in a meeting, they said that could be it. seen as betrayal also yes. because that's a close person to you. Mm-hmm. You, you work okay. with this person. Even yes. if it's not emotional right. there, yeah. that is someone in close proximity like you, who you have an right. obligation to. You went against what it was supposed to be. Right. Like you betrayed me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, this one is more of a comment, but this one is from Joseph. It says, when people try to cheat on you and you know their motive, but still have to go on as they are the only people you have in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think a lot of people do that. They they act like they don't know that their partner's cheating because they don't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. But you're eating at yourself. That, that goes that back. That could never to, be me. That goes back to staying. You in know they're cheating. That people do that. They know that their partner's cheating, but they don't want to deal with like confronting the person or they don't want the relationship to end. So there because are people they that keep like, a facade. Because they feel some people feel like this is the only person, person. that I have in life. Yes. Yeah. Like, so what do I do when the only person I have in life is cheating on me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's a self thing. That's a self thing. Yeah. yeah. I, say, I got to comment Very on that. That's so. definitely a self thing because now mm-hmm. I'm going to say in like the last couple of years, people's values and morals have changed. Mm-hmm. Like, People will understand or know that their partner is cheating on them. And they might look at, well, what am I getting from this? What am I benefiting from this? Mm -hmm. Should I speak on it? They have, I mean, it's relationships now where it's okay to have two girlfriends, two boyfriends. And you know it hurts, but you sitting there dealing with it based on what you're getting from the situation. So if you know, that is a lack of self-respect for yourself, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Period. I mean, if you, as women, you know, men are different. Men aren't as emotional. But women, we have a feeling and half of the time, I'm not going to say it's always right, but, but, it is. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know. And what is the difference between knowing and seeing? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if you know and you're still like, OK. It's about right, you. I'm you not going to bring it up. Then well, you got and you know, when you ma- yeah. when you decided to marry the NBA player, it go with all the ladies. state to state. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and you can't travel with him. Not a truck driver. Yeah. The truck truck. Well, yeah. again, that yeah, goes back yes, to that, goes, too. that got goes, families. Yeah, he got yeah. Yeah, he does. And he got families. That goes, <laughs> that goes back to <laughs> what we're saying here. That's a you thing. That's something you have to fix within yourself. Yeah. And so by saying you choose to you married this person mm-hmm. doesn't mean under I would hope that you get some help for yourself right. to get out of there and to know that you matter in yeah. your back. And a lot of these things are uh, uh, What's the damn word? I just had it in my head. We'll come back. Easier to said than done. Than done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that part. <laughs> we have um, a question for Brother Carter specifically. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. They said, Brother Carter, did you ever have to deal with any toxic people? It sounds like you got some yeah, Monday morning people yeah, yeah. at oh, your job. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Call the names yeah, out. Yeah, yeah names. come on, give us oh, some. Oh, Val. Outside of Val, we knew that. Don't uh, talk about that. Abby. Aaron. 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 I mean, yes, I mean, myself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. So why why is Monday hard for you? I he's a, he said he has that cognac, has a cognac on a Sunday. the weekend, but then maybe you need to do something. Stop drinking. You it's always a you thing. No, see, but see, the thing the is, I'm cool with me not being sociable on Monday. I'm good with that. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. But now, what if it affects everybody else? Though? That ain't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> That goes that back to my empathy. Because I'm good. <laughs> that goes back to, again, what I was saying to the ladies uh, earlier. And gents, if you're listening, you can't keep giving over your power to other people that never see anything wrong with what they're doing. It's a you thing. Mm-hmm. You have to mm-hmm. work on you. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure that you're healthy. It does not matter. Um, it does not matter. You care. It doesn't make you seem like you're this cold, mean person. It may make them feel that way because yeah. they are unwilling to see how their behaviors are affecting and, you. And let me add this to what you're saying, Val. If if you allow people 
to infiltrate you or penetrate you, the word you use. And, and that's a you thing. Mm -hmm. If you if you allow people to do that, if that come in Monday morning and and, and, and person come to me and say something to me and piss me off, that's a my thing. Mm -hmm. I allowed that person to penetrate, right. to infiltrate True. me and give them power over right. this, which belong to me. Right. 100%. They don't belong to nobody else. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have to grow up, I believe. You know, and I don't want to cut nobody off, but we have to grow up to a place where, where we stop allowing what other people say, what other people think about us to affect us. us. Yeah. And influence our actions. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Got to be good with you. All right. Give me some more because yeah. that was only. Um, Angel said. Um, Hello. Good morning, Angel. She said, mm -hmm. but it's not only you in that situation. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Very good. Because that's where it kind of can cross into what we said earlier about lacking empathy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. like, right. And I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong, Brother Carter, mm -hmm. but you're you're seeing it as like, well, I'm just not sociable. But then other people, because it all comes down to perspective, right? Other mm -hmm. people might say, that, like, he's so standoffish. Why is he being like yeah. that? Like, yeah. what's his problem? What's his beef? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so then... Sound you know. like you got issues. No, or they don't personal, sound like I have. You know, or it's like intentional, <laughs> like, oh, he don't like me. Because exactly. my mom is like that. She's, if somebody have a bad day or there something happened she, and they kind of like act different with her or ugly. seeming ugly with her, mm -hmm. she'll take it personal. Mm -hmm. And I mean like personal, personal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, girl, that's a you thing. That's yeah. a you thing. Well, you know, because you don't know what people problems want. Yeah. And made it your own. Right. As if it was intentional right. towards yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You take yourself too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Girl, you ain't that important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this will be uh, our last question. Um, this one is from Neville. It says, how do toxic people affect our minds? Oh, wow. I liked that one. I love that, Neville, because, again, if you keep allowing other people to control your emotions or you continue to deal with people that are toxic, they are going to control your mind. They're going to control yeah. everything that you do. It's going to become a part of you. Mm -hmm. So you have to set boundaries mm -hmm. and you have to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I love you enough. Or this relationship. Well, what if you don't know how to control those triggers? What if you don't know how to control the triggers? Of being a, toxic? Yeah. Oh, of, you of, toxic of, of a person being toxic toward you, 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 yeah, it's true. actually a trigger, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When someone is being toxic and, and you know this person is toxic. Yeah. And you and it still and, trigger you. And it still trigger you. That means you got work to do. You got yeah. work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly, exactly. You know, what you the, as you were saying that you want to go ahead and laugh yeah. more. I was gonna jump. Oh no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> because it, if it's triggering you, yeah. then there is still work, even though you're doing the work, mm -hmm. there is still work that needs to be done. However, you got to recognize that that's still an unhealthy mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. an unhealthy environment, and you are part of that unhealthy yeah. environment. And your mind is being controlled in that environment, yeah. even when you're trying to fix that person. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, you need to change, or mm -hmm. I need to help you, or I need to have this conversation with you because you, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you. It's still affecting yeah. your mind. If you go to bed at night, and wake up with this person still on your mind. Yeah, oh, it affects you. Know, you. Yeah, it affects you. Affect Even you. when you're thinking about yeah. the conversation, right. you're going to tell them and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. You ever been to that place? Break you down. Yeah. Yeah. Some, you went to bed at night and yeah. woke up yeah. and this person. It's still lingering. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. That means that they have too much yeah. control. Too much power. Yeah. 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 Control. Too mm -hmm. much power. Too much. It can really affect like your confidence. Yeah. It can mm -hmm. affect your your spirit, uh, how you interact with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it can take a toll on you to yeah. the point where it's like it affects people's health. Yeah. I think I just seen a, a video recently. So true. Um, oh, my gosh. Who was her name? She played Martin's girlfriend on the show. Oh. Gina. Mm -hmm. no. What is her real name? Uh, uh, so she just did an interview and she was having like a whole bunch of health problems in her when she was married. And mm -hmm. she even said since she got divorced, none of the problems has happened to her since then. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it just had me think like it was affecting not just her mind, but her body. Uh, yeah, her it does. Mm -hmm. Like just the toxicness of someone. Mm -hmm. And it's something to really take in consider consideration of choosing you 
over letting it affect your mind. There you mm-hmm. go. And I go for friends, mm-hmm. husbands, relationships, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not worth it. I've, I've never felt so free and liberated mm-hmm. um, when I disconnected from that toxic person who was the closest friend to me in life. Mm-hmm. And once my eyes was open, because I really had a moment where my eyes were open, like God really allowed me to see that mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. for who they really was and the spirit that was behind them operating mm-hmm. to take me out. And I mean, it just really broke me. And I completely cut it off mm-hmm. in that moment i'm not having no conversation mm-hmm. i'm not talking because you know what you did but and it was you, so are bad. you really free though because when they, let me ask you let me see let me tell you this are you actually freed if if i uh, uh indulged mm-hmm. okay in crack cocaine mm-hmm. and i call myself being delivered and freed mm-hmm. from crack cocaine mm-hmm. And I go around someone after 10 years mm-hmm. of, of being off crack cocaine mm-hmm. and tempted to smoke. Mm-hmm. That, was I freed? Was yes. I delivered? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Every time I'm around this, it's going to give tempted. me well, this. Well, you're going to have the temptation you're when you're used to something. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. It's, what, it's uh, about uh, your uh, what I'm trying to break it down in the, in the toxicity realm mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. Every time you're triggered, you're going to be in this toxic situation, just because you're away from that person right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. the next person you meet may be the same type I of identify, individual. Yeah, and I yeah. identify and I know it's never uh, going to get that close because I see who you are. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. you just know how to deal with it when you see it. Okay. Experiences. So, living, okay. Yeah. so know the signs. Know the signs. Yeah, you know the signs. Okay. All right. You know better, you do better. Mm-hmm. I guess we got to close it. No, this. not yet. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to add that. to this. There's two kinds of triggers. Kind of like on the one hand, where Miss Carter was talking about, it's like you're the one with the like you're the one going to the gun to mm-hmm. shoot, right? There's the internal where you have that feeling and everything, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's the external of what you choose to let out. Mm-hmm. And what they're getting at, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is the internal trigger isn't the thing that makes your response good or bad. It's the external, how you express that, right? Like, mm-hmm. do you keep calm, cool, composed? Do you lash out? Do you apologize if you lash out? You know, it's like, where are you at on your journey with that? And mm-hmm. I think that plays a lot. Kind of even the empathy thing. Too. And then even if you get to the point that you have done the work and mm-hmm. you have been able to recognize this is unhealthy, you can't just say, I'm going to sit and play in it, just like you're using the analogy mm-hmm. of the crack cocaine. Mm-hmm. You know that that's something that you've been delivered from. So why would you want to go put back, yourself around. put yourself yeah. back around it? Mm-hmm. Because eventually, if you keep putting yourself around it, you're going to get yeah. back involved right. in it. So mm-hmm. you have to separate yourself mm-hmm. from things that are triggering Daily. you, that are damaging right. and hurting you. Yeah, because a lot of times people think because they delivered from something they never mm-hmm. will have ever in life have the desire. They mm-hmm. never would be tempted by it. But that's not that's not, not true. true. That's not the yeah, case. That's not okay. the case. And you know what? I want to make a comment too, oh, yeah. uh, just about people, just to leave a, a thought. Because I feel make this your closing remark. Yeah, man. my closing remark is for people <laughs> just to assess the relationships you're in. Like as mm-hmm. we having this conversation, like sit back today and just think about each individual relationship yes. that you have and how it's benefiting you and how you may be benefiting it. Because I feel for a lot of people who are in toxic relationships and don't even know it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? That is so good. And they're stressed out behind these relationships and mm-hmm. really don't even don't know even it. Know it. And this is their girlfriend. Mm. Just say just their home girl. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, you know what? This show is so good. Is but we're gonna do this final. No, that's what we're doing now. I know no, no can you let me be <laughs> the host of this show? Right. Please. <laughs> I, I, I tried to the co-host. I, I tried to, to be the co-pilot. Don't be toxic. <laughs> but you just don't be toxic, okay? Don't be toxic. Okay. All right. <laughs> This show is so good, and I do not want to cut it off, but we have to. And I want to cut it off in a way, or or end this conversation in a way, because it's so important. You need to, I want to leave people with something. And I also want to help you. I want you to just think about what are you bringing to a relationship that can be damaging to yourself? Mm -hmm. And is it anything you want to leave the people with to help them change that journey or that direction. So I know you started talking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to you, but I want to start with Christy, uh, with uh, Coco. I'm trying to, I want you to kind of reword that to make it easier for Mm -hmm. me to understand. Okay. So if you're in a relationship, just any relationship, Mm -hmm. and you know that some of your habits 
uh, could be toxic okay. or that person that you're in the relationship is toxic, what can you give someone or what can you do to change that to make you, to put you in a better place, you know, make you feel healthy or that person healthy? Get out of it, communicate. What can you do different? So to answer the first part, the the self part, if you know that you're toxic or you can identify that you're toxic, um, I would say everyone isn't so open to therapy yet, but you might want to talk to people close to you and get an opinion. Like, do you feel like I'm toxic? Do I do toxic things? Just to get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Because if someone's telling you you're toxic, I mean, they can be saying it just to say it, or they can really be trying to let you know, like, you got some stuff that you need to work on. So Mm -hmm. getting outside opinions so that you can identify, like, what am I doing wrong? Is it how I speak to this person? Is it how I treat this person? Is it my energy? Are they walking, like, on eggshells around me? Like, Mm -hmm. identify it so that you can kind of, like, treat it. And I'm always advocating for therapy. Like, even if you don't want to actually get up and go in someone's office and, um, and talk to them like they have it online. Uh, I think it's called like psychologytoday.com. That's how I found my therapist. You go in there, you put your insurance information. It's so simple. It pulls up like a list of people and you can put like what you're dealing with. Um, and then you can talk to someone. Mm-hmm. They even have it where it'll let you know if they don't accept insurance, how much it costs. Mm-hmm. So you can have an idea. So psychologytoday.com, that's for self-work. If mm-hmm. someone else you feel like in your situation is toxic, um, once again, I would say communicate it. Mm-hmm. I would tell the person I would start there and then see how they open up to it. Like Brother Carter said, some people aren't, they don't like to talk about it. They don't Receptive. like to identify mm-hmm. it or accept mm-hmm. it. So yeah. you only can do what you can do. You can't take on other people's fights. So you can, like I said, communicate about it. If it doesn't go nowhere from that and they start affecting you, you really got to, you know, choose yourself and say, how do I move forward from this with helping me separate myself from that? You can't change people. You can't change their traits. You can only identify it, bring it to the table and offer help. But you cannot change people. 100. All right. Well, you took the whole five minutes on that one. Well, we're going to close the show now. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. I love that. Anything you want to add to that? Oh, no. I just say leave them. You know, (laughs) she made it simple. It's just not, um, it's it's not worth it. I mean, and I'm I'm thinking of a certain level of toxicity. That's why I'm saying leave it. But, you know, take a break from the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, just take a break and really, really think without your emotions in it, how you want to handle this and really evaluate the relationship and the person. Like, is this a person that you need to have in your life? Like, Mm -hmm. is it that important? And if it is, you know, then try to find creative ways that you can deal with with it or have a conversation with this person and get some help and you get some it. help yeah right. but if you when you identify with it too step back and do some self-reflection on self as well mm-hmm. and just you know what? sometime at the end of the day it's i believe it's not the person that's being toxic is is you receiving everything Mm-hmm. as being toxic. toxic yeah and so at the end of the day i believe we all need to reevaluate our Self. own selves yep. first so we can understand you know so, sometimes people are just the way they are mm-hmm. at the end of the day mm-hmm. and so you have to learn how to adjust mm-hmm. and adapt to your environment sometimes I ain't talking about everybody. I'm talking mm-hmm. about in some environments, you just have to adjust and adapt to right. to the people that are in and around about you. Mm-hmm. I agree, but I, I think what I think you just can't leave everybody. I think that that's two different things. I think that, and and we're gonna get back in this show, and we yeah. gotta cut it off. Yeah. I think that's two different things. I think it's not about leaving everyone. It's really about doing a self evaluation of yourself, mm-hmm. so that you can be the very best version of you with the people that you love, even the people that you have to step back from for a moment, because mm-hmm. it's you have to do the work on yourself. First. Well, and first. Well, you said it. I didn't say it. You said it. You, you better stop <laughs> messing with me today, Brother Carter. <laughs> I, all I'm saying to you guys, do the work on yourself and never allow other people to define who you are. That's right. Period. 
period. I love you End guys so much. Uh, Thank y'all for tuning in to the show, too. Brother man. Carter, really, you've been on 99 today. <laughs> I tell you. Harry, well, look, at, look at the panel I'm sitting amongst. I got you on my Brother right. Carter. I got Christina and Coco to my left. And then I got Abigail and, and Aaron over there. Brother. I'm surrounded by beauty. <laughs> so I'm just you excited. You have been toxic today. I love you guys. Until next week. Bye.